We're sisters, best friends, and authors on a mission to help you stoke your creative fire and live the life of your dreams. We believe that purpose fuels passion and that creativity is your secret weapon for mass construction. There's never been a better time to bless the world with your dream realized. You're listening to The Kate and Abby Show. What's up, guys? Welcome back to The Kate and Abby Show. This is episode 25. Super stoked to have you back here with us again. It is Preptober otherwise known as October, but known as Preptober to most writers who are participating in NaNoWriMo, which is National Novel Writing Month. For those of you who don't know what that is or have been living under a rock, it's National Novel Writing Month next month in November, which means October is, for a lot of writers, all about prepping to write a novel in the month of November. So if you fall into this category and you're prepping a novel for November, to write in November, then our podcast today is for you, okay? It's going to be all about finding time to write, but also about making a habit of writing, a daily habit, and what are the things that we can do, what are the steps that we can take to implement a habit in our lives that we will stick to and keep coming back to consistently, Okay, so we're going to talk about that today um, and all of the methods that we personally find very helpful, all the techniques that we find helpful to create and keep with a habit of writing, whether Sounds it's good. daily or weekly, but in the case of NaNoWriMo, it's going to be daily if you're doing that. Yeah. So let's start by talking about something that we kicked off our entire uh, show with way back when uh, the first episode ever one was of my about, favorite topics yeah was about digital minimalism so that might come as a surprise to some people who are like wait what does that have to do with making a habit of writing but it's really at the center of everything it is <laughs> in today's world in today's digital era it is a big part of our lives so, it is. Like, why don't you kick off talking about how digital minimalism helps you in your writing life? So digital minimalism helps me in every area of my life. Um, I practice minimalism in every area of my life, not just digital minimalism, but digital minimalism alone is enough to help you just get leaps and bounds ahead of where you would be if you are constantly distracted by technology. Um, and not just technology alone, but the demands that are placed on you via technology. So emails, phone calls, text messages, notifications from social media, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that as entrepreneurs, small business owners, writers, anyone who's involved with, you know, needing to use technology for work or for their business, then that can be sometimes hard. Because you need to have a phone. You need to have these things so that you you can be available for communication. But I think it's also important to set boundaries for ourselves so that we're not having our sacred time being constantly invaded upon. And what do I mean by sacred time? I mean that your time writing is sacred <laughs> and your creativity your creative time, your your designated time to be creative should be just that. It should be a designated time to be creative in which you don't allow phones and social media and all these things that are highly distracting to just butt in whenever they want to, to grab your attention whenever they want to. I talked about this recently in a video I uploaded called Life Without a Phone. And I, I talked about how several years back, I remember I used to always have my phone right next to me while I was writing, and every time I'd go off, I would pick it up and look at it. And looking back now, I'm like, I can't even fathom writing like that because I don't ever do that now. Um, I I rarely have my phone next to me. And if it's in the same room as me, it's on mute or it's turned off. Um, typically, it's turned off for weeks at a time until I actually need it for traveling because it's, I think it's safe to go. If you're going out, you should have a way to communicate with someone. But other than that, I, I don't live with a phone, and I won't go into that too much because you can go watch the video. But for your writing time, 
you shouldn't have a phone. <laughs> you, you shouldn't have those constant notifications butting in and interrupting your time because you really can't multitask. That's been kind of scientifically proven that you're not giving it your full focus. So if you, you're looking at your phone, looking at your phone, writing your book, you're dividing your focus now. Right. Yeah. And I know that you have, you're a great example of you don't completely not use a phone like I do. You still use a phone, but you have a lot of good boundaries set in place for yourself. So what is like the opposite end of that spectrum? It's if, if you're not going to completely not have a phone or not use a phone at all, but you want to have a phone, you want to have it available or you need to. So how do you handle that? Yeah, well, I think you pretty much said it, that it's about setting boundaries mm -hmm. um, for sure, whether that's actual app limiters, which you can do um, on your phone to limit your use of a certain app. If you know that you get super distracted on Instagram or YouTube or something, you can limit your time in those apps and the app will shut off after a certain amount of time, which um, it will help you to stay off of that app. And also when you go in that app, you'll be thinking about how, okay, I have a limited amount of time here. What do I really want to sp spend my time looking at? Like, do I want to just be scrolling my feed or do I want to take some time to maybe answer comments on my posts or do something more meaningful with that time? Um, same with like YouTube. If you're watching a YouTube video, like w is this really the video that you would watch if you could only watch one? So setting boundaries like that and limiting your time um, that you spend getting distracted, I think can really be beneficial. And one of the things that I do is I do always have my phone on and um, I'm always using it every day for work stuff. Um, but I usually don't have it next to me. So that's one of the things about... Um, the digital minimalism for me is taking, making sure that you are very mindful about what you're inviting into your writing space. Mm -hmm. So the phone is one of those things that just does not get invited to the writing space. If I need to use it when I'm writing, um, I, I never need to use it when I'm writing, but if I need to use it, like if I need to stop writing and go use it for some reason, like go and call somebody or check some kind of message, um, it's nearby, it's in another room, but it's not right next to me. It's not within arm's length of me. Um, and I think that that is really important to just be mindful of what you're inviting into your writing space because that can really help you to build a healthy habit around your writing. Yeah. Like what you put in your space, which actually kind of leads us into one of the other um, things that we're going to discuss about creating a habit for writing is making a designated space for writing which is one of those things that really encourages you to actually sit down every day and write if you have a designated space to write in rather than just, oh, I write anywhere, I write everywhere, you know? Right. Which I know you have a space. You've I made do. a space to write. You made, you made a video recently about that, right? I did, yeah. Um, about making a cozy writing nook. Yeah. Definitely check that making, one out. Yeah. yeah that, that was, was really a, good. That was a fun video. I got a lot of great feedback on because I think a lot of people, a lot of writers are wondering like, how do I make an inviting space that is going to ignite my creativity and make me want to write, not just like, oh, you know, sit down at the kitchen table sort right, of Right, exactly. <clears throat> and maybe you're you're maybe your parent or maybe you live with your family and there's a lot of chaos. Maybe you share a living space and it's just kind of like uh, I feel like this isn't really my own. I think a lot of parents listening can, I know we've both gotten message from a lot of moms and dads who are like, you know, I have to leave my house so I can get some work done. So I think it's important to make a space that's like, it's your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And that's just like one of the things that is really essential with creating a habit is making it attractive to you, something that you want to go and do. And so what are the things that you can do to make it attractive? And um, this is actually perfect time to mention this book, which I love so much. I actually want to reread it, which is Atomic Habits by James Clear. And this is just a great book filled with all kinds of awesome advice on how to create great habits that you can really manage very easily and stick to. And the thing that he talks about that I find really interesting in this book is how he talks about the four laws of behavior change, which are making it, the first law is making it obvious, the thing you want to do. 
The second law is making it attractive. The third law is making it easy. And the fourth law is making it satisfying. Mm. And I feel like those things can apply to literally anything you want to do. But especially writing, when you think about it in the in the realm of writing, like what will get me to sit down and write? Well, how can you make it more attractive? How can you make it easy? How can you make it obvious? And how can you make it satisfying? Those are things that I've asked myself. And one of the things that kind of dawned on me during this whole, whole explana- exploration of uh, building healthy habits is really what your brain wants to take the path the path of least resistance mm-hmm. <laughs> that's kind of your default everybody's brain has that default it doesn't matter how hard working you are i talk about this on my channel all the time the pain versus pain thing for your characters is that your brain will always be like what's the least painful option and that's the root of all procrastination right so when you want to procrastinate on something it's because that isn't really a pressing thing right now and it's more attractive to not do the thing than it is to do the thing so how can we reverse that how can we make it more attractive to sit down and write every day and less attractive to not do that in fact painful to not do that or harder to not do that so i think that we can use these laws of behavior change to build this habit of writing every day in a way that's constructive and doesn't feel like we're forcing ourselves to do it, but we actually want to do it. Mm -hmm. So making the writing space, the designated writing space, I think is a big part of that because if you have a special place to go, even if it's just a, a corner of a room that you, you know, are repurposing into a little office, like making a special place that you go every time you sit down to write and making that the only place that you write even Um, can really help to just lay down that path in your brain of this is what I'm doing every day. I'm going and writing in this place and and space and I'm making it attractive so that it's actually appealing to me to go sit down and write there, you know? Exactly. Yeah, I think that's a huge um, component of it because if you have a space that you really don't like being in or it's just uncomfortable or it's kind of just eh, like you're not feeling it, you're not going to be like, I can't wait to go sit down there and write. Yeah. You're not going to want to. If it's, it, it's especially for me um, personally, um, I love minimal spaces so much and I'm so used to them now that clutter really bothers me. Mm-hmm. So if I sit down in a cluttered space, I find that I'm way less inspired and I just don't really want to work in it. So I, I try to take a few minutes every morning before I sit down to write to declutter the space and just tidy, make it like super appealing, be thoughtful and mindful of what you're bringing into the space. I usually, um, on like a a typical morning before I get into my writing or even my work, um, it can apply to that as well. I like turn on my salt lamp, put some oil in my diffuser. I'm thoughtful going about what type of oil and what kind of energy I want to be bringing into the space. If it's something more lively, if it's something more calming, I bring like, you know, some objects that I find calming or peaceful into the space. So I really like curate it and make it like, you know, I want it to look like something that I would see in like, you know, a yoga magazine or something, you know, and something inviting that makes me like, oh, I can't wait to sit down there and write. So that's, I think, really important, even though it sounds like it's just a minor um, aesthetic detail, it really plays a big role in whether or not you're going to want to spend time in that space writing your book. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like one of the things is um, taking, bringing things into your space that spark creativity. Right. Um, Whether that is, you know, even just an oil diffuser, salt lamp, or, um, even things that visually inspire you for the story that you're writing, like an aesthetic board, a vision board, um, something like that. Uh, And also digital spaces, (laughs) like in your Scrivener, um, customizing your Scrivener to be more appealing to what you're writing, which, by the way, um, there's going to be some cool stuff about Scrivener on my channel very soon, hint, hint. But just Very cool stuff. I've had a sneak preview. (laughs) It's going to be awesome. Making things that are... um, just creating this space in your mind even that is inviting more creativity, Mm. sparking more creativity. Um, And also 
a big part of keeping a habit or making a writing habit is, of course, finding the time to do that, Mm -hmm. finding the time every day to write. So let's say you have the space, you have the motivation, you have the energy, you have all the appealing, attractive things that make you want to go and write, but you feel like you don't ever have the time to write. How do you find the time to write? That's the big question. And one of the one of the answers to that is, first of all, it's the wrong question. You will never find time to write. Underscore to find. You will never find it. You have to make it, okay? It's right. not going to fall out of the sky into your lap. So how do you make time to write? How do you make time to write? <laughs> um, I make time to write by prioritizing it above other things, I would say, would be the simplest answer. I try to identify anything that I'm doing that is useless, <laughs> especially we often do things that aren't even good. They're not even good for us. We're like doing these stupid things that it's like, you know, okay, I'm wasting time looking at a clickbait article. Why am I doing this? This isn't going to help me. I don't need to know these five foods that most doctors rip their hair out over. I don't need to do. I, so identify small things that Can added click on up. those. No, I think maybe one time. It really depends. If it's like really nerdy health article, I might click on it. If it looks super spammy, I'm going to be like, eh. Yeah. Yeah. So, but like, you know, it represents right wasted time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, or, or the YouTube. I think feel like YouTube is a, a slippery slope for a lot of people that it's like yeah. you go down this rabbit hole of like, oh, I, that sounds like an interesting video. And it's like not even something that you would be interested in at any other time of the day, except when you're trying to procrastinate <laughs> exactly. doing something else. And that's very true. That is one that sometimes proves to be a distraction for me. Because even though I don't use social media at all, everyone's always like, you say you don't use social media. How come you're on social media? It's like I, I use... Uh, I use a, like a third party app on my computer to post things, but I do go on YouTube sometimes because there's some like teaching channels that I right. love to watch and learn from. And I think that if we can use social media in a constructive way to learn new things and be inspired, that's great. Right. But but there's a time and place. <laughs> but for there's that. a time and place for that. Yes, and. Like when you're you're like oh there's a little lull and I'm making a cup of coffee and. Oh, look, so-and-so just uploaded a shiny new video. It's only 12 minutes long. I was literally about to say 12 <laughs> minutes. That is oh my crazy. <laughs> that is, I was literally going to say 12 minutes Whoa, long. Wow, that's so oh, weird. Oh, man, we're on the we're, same wavelength. We are, we wow. Are. <laughs> so then it's like that one that's like, oh. oh I want to see that other one. She referenced that video, which I should really watch too. And then yeah. before you know it, a half an hour has gone by. You've this is drank exactly what I hope people do on my channel, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Although <laughs> you're like, you shouldn't do it, but might then actually it. Uh, help encourage someone to get back on yes, the writing that's path. that's true. That's true. I've had a lot of people comment and say that they're inspired to write after watching my videos. So, so that's that's good. That's good something. on you. So, yeah, I think that identify the things that okay, I'm procrastinating. Detach. Look at what you're doing, and is it a waste of time? Can it be done later? Yeah. Then, then, then stop doing that thing, and then there's your <laughs> writing time. Yeah. And actually, like, in that same vein, you can do this with literally everything and even your interactions with people. And it can sound a little bit brutally honest sometimes, but don't don't even care about what they think of you. (laughs) Ask yourself this question about everything you do, especially like learning something on YouTube or even researching something for your book. Ask yourself, do I need to know this right now? Yeah. Usually the answer is no. I even say this in interactions with people. If somebody's telling me too much information, I'm like, do I need to know this right now? And they'll usually be like, well, no, you don't. Now, this isn't like in, this isn't in like, you know, personal conversations that I'm just chilling and having fun with somebody. <laughs> Obviously, that, that would be pretty rude. <laughs> so I'm the other about, day, Abby, I was out at the grocery store and you won't I believe- Do I need to know this right now? No. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> No, I don't do that. I don't do it like that. I'm talking about like business stuff. Okay. So like work related stuff. Uh. Someone's just like info dumping (laughs) on me, telling me about like, you know, all these different things going on. I'll be like, okay, do I need to know this right now? Right. And the answer is usually no. Because if you don't filter that at all, you get overwhelmed. Right. And same with like YouTube videos. So you might be watching something that's like really educational and good, like about, you know, how to do something that you normally do in your life um, or how to make five different flavors of overnight oats. (laughs) Yeah, sure. 
but you're not making overnight oats right now. So <laughs> do you need to know this right now? No. No. You can save it for later that night when you maybe are going to make some overnight oats for the next morning, right? Yeah. Like, so that makes more sense to do it that way. And it's also just, I feel like it makes you live more in the present because you're not like getting distracted on a bunch of different topics. You're like, okay, I'm writing right now. I don't need to know other things right now. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's and actually 100% like, true. The best writing moods that I get in when I like really get in like get on a roll with writing, it's like nothing else exists and exactly. nothing else matters. Yeah. So kind of like creating that beforehand mm-hmm. of like eliminating other things. Right. Other things don't need to exist right now and nothing else matters. Right. And then maybe you'll get into that really good state of flow where you're writing, you're on a roll, and nothing else exists. Right. Like that deep, that place of deep focus. Yeah. Um, it's funny because overnight oats was on my mind as you were talking because I was thinking about how another thing, and I think uh, a lot of people will will be able to relate to this, I find that making meals takes up a huge amount of my time. Oh, yeah. Um, when I don't have anything prepped for food and I get up and I'm hungry, now I have to like figure out what I'm going to make myself for breakfast, go about like making my morning smoothie or whatever else I'm going to have or, oh, what am I even going to have for lunch? Usually that involves a bunch of things. Um, it's very time consuming. That's like a, at least an hour and a half of my day. So if you can meal prep and do that like batch it, meal prep ahead of time, that's why I was thinking overnight yeah. oats because I, yeah. when I want to get my morning going quick, I make overnight oats the night before so I don't have to think about breakfast at all. All I do is grab my jar. Oh, here's my breakfast. Now I can go right. Mm. Not like, well, what am I going to make for breakfast? And then I have to clean everything. And especially if you have a family or a spouse or someone else that you're cooking for, and then you have to consider all of that. So if you can prep those things ahead of time, then that's like probably at least an hour of your day that's now freed up. Right. Yeah. No, that's that's a great thought. Um, meal prep is definitely something that will save you a ton of time. And yeah, mm. I think just prioritizing your writing and especially during like a challenge like NaNoWriMo, like treat it like a job, make take it seriously and realize that, you know, for this month or for this period of time, you've decided to prioritize your writing and make it really important to you. And um, it's okay to put other things off to the back burner for now and tell people that right now I'm focusing on writing this book or meeting this challenge or at least writing this many words this month. Right. Um, And yeah, just show up for yourself. Yeah, 100%. So yeah, I, I think that like, pretty much covers it <laughs> I mean, it does like we're trying to keep it minimal here yeah Min- with a the minimalist theme minimalist theme. so making just your, a few things yeah it's really just it's a few really things. just a few things and you don't have to do like there's so little involved with you actually doing something here yeah. it's mostly mental it's mostly mm. a mental game mm-hmm. um it's a mindset and the more you can simplify the better because then that's that's how that's helping to aid you in not procrastinating and just like stacking all these things in front of writing, which can right. often happen. Yeah. And, and a lot of times you think that you're just preparing and um, prepping for yeah. your writing, but really it's, it's become procrastination because you've been preparing for so long and it's kind of like superfluous at some point. Yeah. So, so you want to just do the bare essentials. Okay, right. exactly just as much as you need to do and then sit down and start writing. Yeah. So, yeah, hopefully those are some habits that will help you or tips that will help you to build better habits that you can stick to. Remember, make it attractive, make it easy, make it obvious, make it satisfying. That's another thing. Reward yourself for a good writing day or even just sitting down and writing anything. Reward yourself with something that you love to do, whether it's I postponed watching that video on YouTube or it's some other way that you like to treat yourself to something that is good for you and nourishing and satisfying. So definitely keep that in mind as well. Um, That's something that I do for writing. But I also like to try to make the writing process as appealing as possible. So as attractive as you can make that, the more attractive, the better, the more things you can pair with it that are 
really enjoyable, like mm-hmm. making a nice cozy writing nook, making a cup of tea, lighting a candle, doing things that are really relaxing and fun. Make it more fun. Right. Because it creates that association in your mind. Yeah. It's like, oh, writing I associate with a cozy cup of tea yeah. by the window with a nice smelling candle. So right. even now when you smell that candle, when it's not burning, you're going to think, oh, I want to write. Exactly. Because you're associating those two things. Now, if you make writing like kind of a miserable task where you're like, I have to do this and you're at your kitchen table and your kids are like running around yelling and you're like, ugh. Like that's not going (laughs) to, you're not going to want to do that again. So make it something that as soon as you think of writing, you're like, oh, oh. Like the, what is it? The Glade commercial? Yeah, (laughs) I think it is. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, the candle, the smell of the candle. You want it to be like those, those, what is it? The uh, lint chocolate? Yeah. Like the lady bites the truffle and it's just like, oh, She goes into like paradise. Yeah, paradise for like a minute. That's what you want your writing time to be. Exactly. <laughs> you want it to be a lint truffle. Yeah. So, so make it that. <laughs> exactly. You can, for sure. But yeah, so those are our best tips for keeping a writing habit this November. Or if you're preparing for NaNoWriMo um, or even writing before NaNoWriMo, anytime, any place, that's how to keep a good habit of writing. Our best tips for it. Yep. So if you enjoyed this episode, share it with a writer buddy, especially one who is going to embark on NaNoWriMo this year. And um, also, if you're on just listening to the podcast on Spotify or something like that, check out the YouTube version, the video version, which is on Kate's YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Emmons. And check out my channel, which is youtube.com slash Abby Emmons. And if you are interested in supporting the show and getting behind the scenes content, check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show, and you can support us there. But as always, a great way to support us is to just share the podcast with a friend. So yeah, that's it for us. Until next week, rock on and stay stoked.